Hi everyone and welcome to this narrated time lapse of Hutch the Weimaraner. So tricky Weimaraner colours which you'll see. Also I'm trying out a paper that's new to me, suede matte board. Hopefully I'll be able to make some videos about that really soon but for now I hope you enjoy the progression of Hutch. If you haven't already please do hit the subscribe button here on YouTube also, consider checking me out over on Patreon if you'd like to see the longer versions of videos like Hutch the Vibranner. But I hope you enjoy seeing this build up from beginning to end. So as always, I start with the background and I decided to go with something quite plain, unlike in Hutch's photo reference. I tried to make it a nice colour to complement Hutch and the beautiful colour of his eyes seemed to stand out as a good option as his eye colour stands out really well against his coat colour and hopefully that should tie the whole piece together. So building up a nice smooth gradient on the suede matte board a little bit more tricky to do than I find on velour, so I wouldn't want to be building up a large area of gradient on that paper. But it worked quite nicely for this. Just a little hint of the texture of the paper left, but overall a nice smooth gradient. As I said though, I'll definitely come back and make some comparison videos to talk about some of those differences between the suede matte board and some of the other papers that I like to use. I love using Hanamul Velour and also Pastel Matte and I was actually given this sheet of matte board to try by another artist and they described it as a strange mix of both velour and pastel matte. So that made me very excited to try it as I love both of those papers. The first place that I really start to experiment is on that uh, right ear as we look. Just trying to pick out some of the colours that I might need in the fur. Weimaraners have such an unusual colour. It's not really one colour you could describe it as, but uh, so many different colours mixed together in smaller marks to create the effect. And it really depends on what type of lighting you photograph a Weimaraner in. They can look quite uh, cool with blue tones or they can look really quite warm with a lot of pinky orangey tones, warm lilacs. But you'll see just how many colours I have to layer up to create Hutch's colouring. The eyes, I'm making use of the same greens that I used in the background. Or I should say really that I used Hutch's eye colour for the background. Some really lovely, pale, minty greens. And that contrasts really nicely with all the warm tones that I used throughout his fur. So around his eyes, you get those fleshy, warm red tones. And that goes really nicely against the cooler greens. But he's got really beautiful eyes. And I found it quite easy to achieve the detail on the matte board, on the suede matte board. Quite similar to working on velour actually. Uh, there are some differences I've noticed and I'll go into more detail on that when I do a good comparison video. But on the whole I really enjoyed the experience. Strangely, I feel I can get more detail on this than on velour, therefore it's a little bit more like pastel matte, but I still get the same softness and almost 3D effect that you can get from velour. So it really is like uh, some of the best parts of both of those papers together. But at the same time, there were some problems that I uh, encountered I had to be quite sparing with my layers. I don't think it holds quite as many layers as velour, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I could certainly use plenty of layers on this to create this fine fur effect, which sometimes takes more layers than you would imagine. So really taking my time on it, Lots and lots of little small marks. 
working mostly from the darker shades up to my highlights. Really trying to choose the colours accurately to describe whether we're in the light or the shadow. And that's so important if you're trying to get the 3D appearance. I really loved Hutch's photo reference. It's as if his nose is really coming out from the paper. And sometimes this close-up perspective when you're photographing a dog for its portrait, it can really work. And I'm focusing a lot of my attention as always on the eyes, but I also want to put a fair deal of detail on the nose as that's really coming out towards the viewer. But you can see that I'm not using very much pastel pencil in this project. The majority of this was done with those soft pastel sticks, mostly unisons. I've used one or two Terry Ludwigs throughout this project as well. But right up to the tiniest marks for the highlights and the top layer of fur, pretty much all done with the soft sticks. Sometimes the pencil for around the edges Certainly some detail in the eyes and in the nose. But you can achieve a lot of detail with just those soft sticks alone. I look forward to sharing this project as tutorials, full length tutorials, on my Patreon channel. I'll be going into a lot more detail in those on my colour choices and on how I layer up this type of fur. Something I've already talked about in many of my tutorials, but with this one in particular, it's such unusual colouring, very different from most other breeds of dogs and not that many animals really where you get this type of colouring. Some horses I'm sure there are other types of animal where this may be useful, but it's a great exercise in really looking at colour, making yourself really uh, analyse what it is you're seeing rather than what you think. Because I know for uh, myself, I, my mind really doesn't know what to think when I look at a Weimaraner's coat. Depending on the light, there's so many different re colours reflected off of it. So I tried to use a mixture of colours, both trying to get that cool grey effect, but also keeping a lot of warmth in the coat. Another area that I seem to paint quite a lot is collars, leads and collars, uh, anything, any other accessories that you might find on a pet. And hopefully I'll come back and do a little tutorial based on this collar showing you how to go about that. How to get the different textures within a collar, whether it's leather, um, a canvas material collar like this one, but then you've also got all of the shiny bits, uh, whether it's plastic or metal. You've got a lot of different textures to deal with on one collar, so very soon I'll release this on my YouTube channel here as a little tutorial. So again, making use of the bigger sticks, but then coming in with the pastel pencils just to neaten up and create the sharp lines where I need them. I love painting shiny objects, so I really enjoy bits of uh, collars or the bridle on horse portraits. I really like all of those details to work on. So at this stage it really started to feel like I was on the home stretch, even though there's a lot left to do. That front area on the dog's chest is really complicated, so many different directions of fur. And the fur is so smooth and fine that I've got to come back many, many times, create many layers with small marks. And each time I create another little layer, it adds to the depth and 3D quality of the fur. But that takes patience. I spend a long, long time on this piece, just making tiny little marks. 
and layering it up gradually. One of my favourite things to paint, definitely, fur. So many different types of fur. And that's what I've been trying to do in my tutorials, tackle all sorts of different lengths and textures and colours of fur. So this is an interesting one to add to the mix. I've got to paint quite a few Vimoraners now and each piece turns out so differently because of the way these dogs reflect light. So over on the shadow side of the dog, you can see my colour choices are a little different. Always thinking about where the light's coming from. So if you like the time-lapse videos, I've got lots of these here on my channel. Uh, do be sure to check out some of my playlists. If you're more interested in longer tutorials, I've got some of those here on my YouTube channel too. And you'll find the full catalogue of those over on my Patreon. But I hope that you'll hang around on my channel and check out some of my other videos. I have lots of new videos planned very soon. I've been working hard on a colour theory series. So please do subscribe and you'll get access to all of my free content here on YouTube. But it's really thanks to the guys over on my Patreon channel. They're the ones enabling me to make all of these videos and I thank them very much for their support. So thanks again for watching, and I hope I'll see you next time.